Because this right here, all master mechanics will tell you what, what I'm about to do is impossible. All thermodynamicists will tell you this is impossible. We're not defying any of the laws of physics. Now, this right here is the exhaust in our engine. When I turn this on, I'll put the rag up here and it'll be doing this because there is exhaust coming out of this engine. So it'll be doing like that. No exhaust here, no exhaust here, no exhaust here. And this is not exhaust. This will be sucking this rag in. This is air intake because you've got to have air to make the burn. So you've got to have air intake in here. Now, this is kind of interesting because this is a ball valve. When I turn this ball valve this way, I shut that off. That means that if I put the rag up here, it'll be doing this. There's no gas there at all. It will not be coming out, no exhaust whatsoever. There'll be no exhaust here, no exhaust here, and once again, it'll suck the rag in here. Now, if you take a potato and stick it on a tailpipe of somebody's car, what happens? It won't run. You're done. Banana, potato. Well, I'm doing the same thing when I shut this ball valve off. I'm shutting off the exhaust. Now, I'm going to start it with it open so I can start it. But once I get it started, it'd be the equivalent of sticking a potato in that tailpipe then. Not going to work. Now, now, in this guy right here, and by the way, General Motors knows this. All the engine manufacturers know this. All the people who sell gasoline know this. That's the reason why they put a computer on your car. That's the reason why they say you can't touch the exhaust on the engine because then they've legislated that to try to keep us from doing this. We don't need to get inside the exhaust. So we can get the heat. That's all we really need is the heat. Now, so I want to just tell you the most important part. When you buy a dollar's worth of gasoline, ask any mechanic if you're really lucky how efficient is your engine. About 18%, am I right? About 18%. That's how efficient your engine is. 18%. Now, what does that mean? That means when you buy a dollar's worth of gas, 18 cents worth of it is getting you down the road. Where's the rest of it going? Right out your exhaust pipe and heat losses. So you're losing it out of the engine. Now, when you buy a dollar's worth of gas, you're getting 18 cents worth of travel. This is the good neighbor plan. You're giving your neighbor more of the gas that you're buying than you're using for yourself. Do they appreciate it? They don't appreciate it. So I say they're not going to appreciate it anyway. Why not shut it off? Now, if I shut it off, that 82 cents isn't coming out anymore. Where's it going? It's going right back into your gas tank, mixing with fresh gas. So the unburned gas and the fresh gas are coming up as... Um, molecules coming through this separation process, coming back into the engine as elements, mixing with air, and reburning until what? Until 100% of the gas you are buying is burned. All of it is burned. Now, which would be more gooder, 18 cents or a dollar? You'd rather burn a dollar, I'm sure. Now. If you're wondering how that happens because you're technical and you're like, wow, how could you do that? Because you'd be saying, wait a minute, you'd blow the gas tank up. You'd have all that back pressure. Got to have a high side. That's the explosion. Got to have a low side where you can throw the gas or throw the unburned gas too so that you can get rid of it because you've got to have a high and low side. Well, if you can't send it to the environment, where is the low side? I'll give you one hint. The hint is... The intake of all engines is a vacuum. Anybody know that? There you go. That's a pretty good low side. It's less than zero. OK. OK, we turn it on. It's running. Got it on a lawnmower so it can throw grass. There's the exhaust. See the exhaust? That's exhaust. No exhaust here, no exhaust through here, no exhaust here, and this is intake. It's sucking the rag in. Now we're going to go ahead and shut it off, close it.
Did it shut off? Isn't it still running? And if you notice, there's no exhaust. No exhaust here, no exhaust here. Try to suck the rag in. Now, by the way, this is impossible. You can't do this. This is impossible. No exhaust. None at all. How much pollution would there be? None. How do I shut it off? I break the vacuum on the low side. Watch what happens when I break the vacuum. When I break the vacuum, it stops. Can't feed into a vacuum if there's no vacuum there. All right, now, go ahead. How much pollution would there be in that? Wouldn't somebody think that the EPA would want to hear about this? You know who the EPA is? The Environmental Pollution Authority? See, those guys would not even allow us to bring this engine into their office. We went to their office. They wouldn't allow us to have it in. They said, no engines in the building. So we said, okay, you can come outside and see it. And they wouldn't even come outside their building to the parking lot to see this. And I said, well, we'll do it on our side of the glass window, and you can look through the windows and see it. And they wouldn't do that either. They said, no, we're not allowed to endorse any product. Isn't this interesting? But you've got to understand something. When we end pollution, don't we end the EPA? And so that's a little bit too much uh, uh, non-pollution for them. What to you is an acceptable level of pollution? For me, it's zero. But we can modify the engines to run with no pollution at all. Tonight, I'm going to show you we can end all fossil fuels for any purpose at all. We don't need fossil fuels at all. That is a lie. The fact that you're buying fossil fuels for any purpose at all is a big, fat lie. You don't need it. 